Arnoglossum, just getting started. What a cool, a, a rubbery aster, a rubbery composite. The flower head, see those phyleries? Looks like the phyleries on Yermo, Xanthocephalus. That weird uh, composite only known from two locations in Wyoming because they're somewhat closely related. You can see it going up. Look at the Monarda going off. Oh, that's nice. The Monarda's going off in a couple weeks. It'll be a whole new cast of species going off as the Monarda is kind of dying down. You got the Coreopsis will be coming out. Rebecca is making it big right now. The little blue, the big blue stem isn't even, isn't even up yet i mean it's up but it's not getting as tall as it normally is i mean this all this shit will be up to your up to your head in another month or two such a nice fucking prairie here in beautiful hatchkins all right oh i see you you fucking creeper huh what are you jerking off in the bushes over there huh i see you perverts i know what people do in these woods all right it's been a suburban tradition for going on 50 years okay i'm not necessarily knocking it but uh you know God, that's insane. It's like, look at the sun is going off. Sun, well, it's not going off. It's about to go off. Remember, stuff doesn't really start start to get going here at these higher latitudes the, until probably, you know, August, late August. Late August, early September. Then it's really lit up. I mean, you still got a lot of growth to happen here. Remember, this, just whole re, this whole area just blew up. It was, you know, you could walk out there and barely be up to your ankles only uh, two or three months ago. God, look at that. there! See, there's the big blue stem. There's the Andropogon gerardii. Sorgastrum natanzas somewhere in there too. Monarda's just just intoxicating. Rudbeckia. So much Illinois look like this, but wouldn't you rather have cornfields, huh, to feed cows? You know, so you could eat Whataburger or fucking McDonald's. You know, 15 times a week, even though you don't move. <laughs> you live a sedentary life. You know they. I'm not saying red meat's bad. I'm just saying it's been linked to ass cancer in high amounts, you know? Eating a lot of it and not exercising as Americans are wont to do, you know? There you go. Look at the look at the inflorescence. Look at the little the little flowers on big blue stem. Little dangling anthers. You know, you get out, it's dense grassland. I I fucking love grassland. I prefer grassland to forest. I preserve I pre prefer these prairies to forest. This is so much nicer. This is open, exposed, takes kindly to burning. I like fire. I did as a teen too. Oh, you got Cama Christa down there? That's a huge genus in Brazil. Those little yellow flowers, say salpinoid uh, subfamily of the pea family. So much of this has been lost. See, this is what you got to mimic in your garden. This is why it pisses me off. You see, native plant gardens they plant everything in a straight line you know, evenly spaced, three feet apart from everything. At least they're using native plants, but you're not mimicking habitat. You want to mimic habitat. You want this dense chaos. Look at how beautiful that looks. It's so fucking nice. You know, whine about ticks. I haven't gotten any ticks. You're worried about ticks. Set your fucking yard on fire every year. It's fun. It'll get the neighbors involved. You know, get the police involved. Gives them something to do. You know, if you live in the suburbs, the cops are probably bored. What are they dealing with? Kids smoking pot? They got nothing to worry. That's, that's legal in Illinois now. The cops are bored. Give them something to do. Light your yard on fire. It's fun. Right? Keep a hose nearby. Do it on a cold day when there's not a strong wind. But do it. That's what Jerry Wilhelm does. Light your yard on fire. Then you don't have to worry about ticks. I mean, you don't have to worry about them anyway. You should be, uh, you know, don't, don't be a fucking mouth breather. Be checking your ass. You know, have someone else check your ass. That's a nice opening line. Get them to make sure you're not covered in little creepy crawlies. But you burn. That's how you get rid of them. It's fine. And keep the deer out of your yard, too, like that little creeper we just saw over there. You heard me! And right here, look, we got the Vernonia starting to bloom. Oh, another, this is another lineage that's big in Brazil. This is really big down in Brazil. Lots of members of the Vernoniaoidae, the Vernonia subfamily. Ironweed. Look at that, no ligules, just discoid flowers. Oh, who's that? There's some guy mining it, tapping into it. No ligules, just discoid little flowers poking out of that uh, involucre. Ta, oh, liatris. This thing is nice. This thing will be going off. Each one of those is a flower head containing, I don't know, 10 or 20 little tiny pink flowers. Ooh, it's sticky. The blazing stars, look at that. It's a four foot tall, bla yeah, three and a half foot tall blazing star. It's still early here in the prairie. What is this, 40 degrees, 45 degrees north latitude? Much, you know, much higher latitudes than I normally hang out at. 
Eryngium yuccifolium, carrot family. See, each one of those things is a little individual flower with a little pink pink anthers. A lot of, lot of members of Eryngium. A lot of species in that. Few are so beautiful as this glaucous blue leaf bastard that uh, kind of looks like a yucca. That's the name yuccifolium. Silphium terebinthinaceum. Leaves can get five times that size. Sends up a 12 foot tall flower stalk. There's that orangey. See, look at the look at those beautiful glaucous blue base of leaves. Oh. There's that camacrista flower, see? Sacel pineoid subfamily. Right, very distinct flower morphology. Just like a senna. Oh look, there's the ovary that looks like a little sickle down there. They call what do they call this partridge pea? It's a partridge pea. Partridge. I don't know why they call that. Was it a, why is it a partridge pea? I don't know. But look at it. It's got those pinnate leaves. They fold up like many legumes do for the night. They'll be open again tomorrow morning. There you go. See, it's got porocidal anthers. Pores in them anthers for buzz pollination. There's that ovary down there. See right there. Turns into a little legume fruit. Asclepius verticillata. Verticillate milkweed. Ooh, so dainty with those tiny white milkweed flowers. You see those horns coming out of them. You still got an umble. Linear leaves, not getting too tall, kind of blending in with the grass. Again, look how dense this is. This is what you should try to mimic. We'll go space and stuff three feet apart, especially in a uniform line, like it's planted in front of a bank, like it's bank landscaping. Ugh. God, look at that Minarda. Oh, it's beautiful. Mimic the chaos of nature. See, look, thinner, look, it's thinner here. Thinner soils here. Got a little bit of dolomite, that's why the little blue stem's taking over and the, the plant life is a lot, it's a lot lower and you got lots of silphium, terebinthinaceum. You can see it dries out, that soil dries out a lot quicker. See, look, it's got cracks in it. Because the, the bedrock is right there at the surface, that dolostone, that dolomite. So you get species that thrive on thinner soils here. Yeah, look how sparse the vegetation is here. Compared to back there, oh, we got a Hypericum, St. John's Wort. A lot lower growing, it's much more sparse. Look at that nice echinacea. It's already one off. Silphium's getting it in because it can get a little bit more light, there's less competition. It's silphium, must, it's got deep roots though, that thing must be, must be really dug in. I wonder if it's going into the bedrock or what. Wouldn't you read it? The whole thing is lit up with singing insects and cool birds. It's, how would you not want that? I don't get it. Oh, look, here we go. Here's the Arno Glossum. Oh, yeah, there you go. Arno Glossum plantagenium. What is it, plantagifolium? I forget. I've been out of the loop for a year. There's a little snail hanging out. Got rubbery leaves, asteraceae, and it's got those cool phyleries. Again, reminiscent of that really, really weird plant, that in Wyoming endemic, that rare plant that grows on volcanic ash in uh, central Wyoming, Yermosanthocephalus. Got the same phyleries as this because it's, uh, I believe it's in the same tribe. It's one of my favorites. They call it Indian plantain. Dorky common name. I just call it Arnold Glossum. Whatever. You call it whatever you want. I don't give a shit. Just get it in your yard. Kill your lawn. 